So, try not to get this powerful magnet near my camera or lens or my iPad, because that's a bad idea. Uh, something that you don't understand about magnetism and other people don't. Because people don't understand field theory. Um, like a larger box holds more stuff, right? Right. Smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. Field theory works inverse to that. Um, as was famously said by Dollard, is that you can never understand electrical theory without understanding counter space. And he is exactly correct. Now let's take this for example. This is a powerful N52 Gauss neodymium iron boron. There have been more than a few people that have bought the super powerful magnets and they're like, I got gypped! Because the field is very, very shallow. People think, now, you can, you stick your brain into drive mode for a second and just stop listening to this video and me saying stuff and engage this video because you're going to get more out of this video if you engage your damn mind. Now think for a second. If you buy more power, let's say this was an N48 Gauss and I had another one exactly like it, same size, so, and it's an N52, which is what this one is. It's like, well, I'm really impressed with the N48 Gauss magnet. Okay, it's a rating for the field, which is significant. You know, it's got a decent field around it, which is what people screw with magnets. Uh, you know, they enjoy the really uh, strong field around them. Well, I'm going to buy, instead of an N48, I'm going to buy an N52. Well, it's exponentially more powerful, so the field should be bigger around it, right? Kind of like a larger balloon, a larger field of influence. Just the opposite is the case. Are you engaging your brain yet? Okay, now, there's a neat little stunt at Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, which is this faucet that hangs in midair and it pours water out, but there's nothing behind it. It's like, where the hell is the water coming from? Well, there's a thin, uh, uh, transparent tube up the middle of the water stream that keeps feeding water up to the faucet, and then it flows out around the tube. So it's like this free-hanging faucet. You need to think about that. Now think of your bathtub. And let's think of a, a bathtub that's based upon the way fields work. Imagine that instead of water just flowing down the drain, that the more water that you put output... Uh, imagine then that the drain hole where the water goes into starts sucking in the water faster. Like say you got a bathtub and the water's pouring and you pull the drain, you know the water starts flowing down the drain like this. Now imagine as the water's flowing down the drain in the bathtub, you turn the water power up. And then imagine when you do that instantaneously, the drain actually cycles up and pulls the water down faster. Now you need to understand that field theory doesn't work like conventional things. Like a larger box holds more stuff. Well, when it comes to field theory, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. The more you actually increase the Gaussian flux, magnetism is the di divergent centrifugal loss of inertia, which follows the reciprocating processional hyperboloid the actual transverse reciprocating loss of inertia, which transverses the physical mass. Remember, everything here is field coherency. Everything is operating off of the plane of inertia, the dielectric plane of inertia. Dielectric inertial plane, right? More powerful the magnet, the weaker, I mean, excuse me, the more shallow and uh, more... Uh, um, uh, massively insignificant is the field. Actually, it wouldn't be massive because this is a mass. It's uh, rather smaller in magnitude. I've gotten that question by many people. I bought really powerful magnets and uh, I must have been gypped because the field is a lot more shallow. Instead of where they'd feel it right here on like an N48, they have to bring it a lot closer on an N52. It's like, well, this must be a weaker magnet. No, it's a more powerful magnet. But by increasing that flux, you're also increasing the centripetal convergence and what you're doing is you're creating a pressure differential that takes the field like say from an N48 to an N52 such that it is literally pay close attention, the, the field is literally collapsing in on itself with a smaller spatial footprint. In other words, the magnitudinal footprint of that centrifugal field divergence, which is the magnetism, and centrifugal divergence and centripetal convergence. Everything is force in motion, inertia and acceleration. By actually increasing 
the uh, the Gaussian flux in the hexagonal neodymium iron boron that makes up the lattice work of this magnet, you are decreasing the spatial footprint of the magnetism's centrifugal divergence outside of the mass of the physical magnet itself. So it is more shallow. Imagine, for example, you had you know, a pickup truck with, I don't know, a hundred horsepower, okay, and it's the size of a regular pickup truck. And then you bought another pickup truck, based upon field theory here, that had 400 horsepower, except the size of that pickup truck would be the size of, you know, one of those little kitty carts, you know, the one little, little children get into and they little pedal the wheels. It's like, wow, it's a lot more powerful, but it's a lot smaller. The smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. When a magnet is turned into a magnet, to make it more powerful, you have increased its capacitance. By increasing the capacitance, you have decreased the spatial magnitude of the footprint of the field centrifugal divergence that defines the magnetism of the magnet. Now, let's apply this to a black hole. As I've told you before in other videos, what a black hole is is really simple by somebody that truly understands field theory, which nobody does. It is something that is super massive that has absolutely no magnitude. I explained it before in other videos. I'm going to go over it in this video explain what a black hole is again. But people don't understand that. It is literally where acceleration, inertia and acceleration, overthrows force and motion. See, the only reason that this exists in space, all the atoms that make up this neodymium iron boron, is because the loss of inertia, the centrifugal divergence, it gives it a spatial footprint that lets it be a mass of certain dimensions, you know, is greater than the inertia and acceleration to countermand that. What a black hole is, is something that is so massive, the field coherency initiates an acceleration, like uh, a supermassive star with the iron core, it uh, becomes coherent, and then the acceleration and inertia overthrows the power of the centrifugal divergence that gives it a magnitudinal footprint, i.e. Cartesian coordinates of dimensions, length, width, depth, such that it is something now that is supermassive, meaning mass, not supermassive like this, because that's magnitude. This is magnitude, right? Something supermassive is just meaning mass, a collection of mass. Something that is supermassive that has no magnitude. It's neither a black nor is it a hole, so to call it a black hole is absolute nonsense. It's just stupid human. Well, you know, there's something supermassive out there. Everything is kind of floating into it, but, you know, it has... No magnitude. There's nothing there. So let's call it a black hole. We can't see it. And like stuff is getting sucked into it. So we're going to call it a black hole. What a black hole is, is a non-Cartesian supermass. It means it is something that is supermassive, meaning literally mass itself. Not like mass. You think of mass, you think like big. No, mass is literally matter. Here we have to define um, denotation from connotation because people think massive, they think massive. No, massive as in mass, matter. Something that is super massive that has no magnitude, no Cartesian coordinate. So, the same principles that govern what we understand about a black hole is the same principle that I get emails on from people like, I bought super powerful magnets, but the field is really, really, you know, like they're used to N48 Gauss, the field is about yay big, really powerful around it right here. Well, on N52 Gauss, it's about like that. If you think about that for about five minutes and you have a brain, which I'm sure you do, you will understand that. Because this more powerful magnet exists now within a smaller spatial footprint of magnitude. Space is not a thing. Space is only there's no such thing as space and time. Time is only the measure of passing of magnitudes, and magnetism. I mean, magnitude is only the after effect of centrifugal divergence. Time and space do not exist. There's only a couple of principles in the universe: force and motion, inertia and acceleration. Everything's based upon capacitance, resistance, permeability, and permittivity. Time and space are not things. 
They are parameters by which human beings give definition to things within their existential corporeal lives. But time and space have absolutely no meaning in ultimate reality. Oh, which, by the way, the ancient Greeks said that, the ancient Indians said that, the ancient Egyptians said that, so did some other cultures. There's no such thing as space and time. And that, kiddies, is why a more powerful magnet, and this is undeniable, it's not my idea, it's absolutely undeniable, a really, really powerful magnet like an N52 gauss, there are even some N54 gausses, but they're, they're a lot smaller in size, you can't make an N54 gauss pretty large. This is why a more powerful magnet has a smaller magnetic field around it. Because when you increase the strength, you're increasing capacitance. And the inertia and acceleration and the magnetism are both two sides of the same damn coin. So when you increase the capacitance, the smaller the space, the higher the capacitance. When you increase the capacitance, you're decreasing the magnetic footprint. And that is a very, very, very important secret that you'll not read anywhere or hear told by anybody except for here. And this video maybe dry or uninteresting, is actually incredibly important. And if you can wrap your brain around it, you'll understand some of the fundamental principles that define the secrets of all cosmic mechanics. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, drop me a buck or two. You tell me to jump off a cliff. Whatever makes you happy. But I am undeniably 100% correct on this. This is undeniable, period me or not. But what I said is absolutely undeniable. Thanks so much for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.